Earlier, I spoke with Emira Woods for more on Mr. Obama's visit to Africa. Ms. Woods is the director of social impact programs at the technology firm ThoughtWorks. She is an expert on economic and foreign policy, and we talked about the U.S.'s economic partnership with Africa and the president's personal connection to this continent. I think it is, it is personal because of those connections that you mentioned, because the Kenyan people have been clamoring for him to visit um, really since he came into office. Um, but it is also highly symbolic. It is the son of Africa returning for now a fourth trip to the continent. And I think um, the question is, beyond the symbolism, beyond the photo ops, to what extent does this trip actually bring any substantive change in terms of the lives of people, whether in Kenya or elsewhere on the continent? So far, Mr. Obama has addressed that right out of the gate. He said, you have to rid out corruption. You have to make uh, prosecution of people more public. You have to let the people know that you will not stand for this if you do want foreign investment here. Without a doubt, the issue is the structures of the economy. We have to understand, especially after Greece, that there is an economic model in place that is essentially impoverishing the majority of people on the planet. So you have a neoliberal economic model, capitalist greed, however you describe it, right, that is driving resources into the hands of those that already have. Those that have are getting more. Those that don't have are being pushed further to the brink. So this is the the problem, fundamentally, there needs to be a reset button. It isn't only mouthing the words corruption. It's looking at the structures that give more wealth and power to those that already have it, whether None it's the multinational corporations or the local elites that do their bidding. None of this will happen overnight. And how long will this take, do you see, generations? Well, I think the issue is to what extent can the, that system be challenged? I think without a doubt the incentive is to see that you have a, a booming young population throughout the continent. Africa's 1.5 billion people you know, are estimated to be predominantly young people who are driving for a new economic model, one that will have an emphasis on manufacturing, one that will bring decent jobs with decent wages. We have trade unions all around the continent, you know, from South Africa's Metal Workers Union and others that are, that are demanding a different path, that are demanding a path that meets the needs of all. But what so I'm it is those demands that fundamentally need to be heard. If it won't happen overnight, if this is going to take generations, what incentive do the people at the very top who are accused of taking part in corruption have to stand back from all of this and, and encourage investment if they um, are benefiting directly? I think the incentives are there if the model is different, right? The incentives would be a, 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 st a stable economy with a society where people can have access to education, access to health care, those essential building blocks of healthy societies. That's the biggest incentive. But the pressure, you know, it's almost like the carrots have to be there as well as the stick. And in terms of U.S. multinational corporations, they have been focused on extractive resources, whether it's oil, um, liquefied natural gas, mining, land, and this massive land grab throughout the continent. So there has been this process of extracting resources without benefiting the people. So the fundamentals of the economy has to change in order for more stability to be actually um, enjoyed, not only in Kenya, but throughout the continent.